so I have like five short stories, so if that precludes me from winning, that's fine. Um, but I'm going to tell them anyway. Um, so the first one, uh, I'm taking some creative license here because I wasn't alive yet. Um, so it's probably like June 15th of 1984. My parents are doing things that I don't want to think about my parents doing. Long story short, nine months and one marriage later, ta-da, here I am. So my mom made me. Well, fast forward now about three years. It's February of 1988. The prior year I had graduated from Mommy and Me and now was in all by myself. So I'd been going to that for a little bit. Um, and one day I decided this lesson sucks. It was probably something like learning to count or something useless. Um, so I decided that I was going to leave. So I get up and I walk up to the front of the, the room there where all the coats are. And I take my coat off and I, I didn't possess the motor skills of like an adult yet. So I did that trick where you throw the coat on the ground upside down, you shove your arms into it, you throw it up over your head. Um, and the teachers didn't realize me walking to the coats or my theatrical coat putting on display. Um, and I just left. Um, so like, I'm just walking out, I walk down the hallway, I get out the front door. Luckily, my mom that day was still in the parking lot talking to another parent who was there. Um, much to her dismay, she sees her son all zippered up, walking out the front door of this place, <laughs> not with any teachers. Um, so, you know, she, you know, gets me, takes me back in there, and I go about my business. But for the next four months, my mom, pregnant with my sister, sat in the car for three hours every single day, waiting for me to come back out when, you know, we were learning something else stupid like how to read. Um, so we'll fast forward again, now it's the year 2000, and I'm running high school track. I was a mile runner, and I'm coming down at this one track meet, we're against Notre Dame, kind of a rival high school, and I'm coming around the last bend, and there's this guy in front of me, he's like, you know, five to 10 yards in front of me, and I'm not racing for anything, all the good guys already finished, I'm like racing for seventh place, but I don't care, I'm gonna catch that son of a bitch. So, <laughs> I, I start my kick, I'm running down this like straightaway, and I'm get, I get like halfway down, and I can almost reach out and touch this guy now, but my focus gets pulled away because I hear something in the stands, and it's my mom, and she's, go to me, go to me, as, as only the Sharons can do. Um, so at the time, you know, Jim trying to be cool in high school guy, yeah, I'm like, Jesus Christ, shut up, mom. Um, <laughs> Well, looking back on it, you know, my mom supported me, and that's fantastic. So we'll fast forward again, uh, more kind of present tense. And uh, now that we both have gainful employment, my mother and I talk about our jobs sometimes. Um, so the one time, she's telling me about what's going on at her work, and I won't tell the story because this is going on the internet, and I don't want, you know, more drama at work. But she's particularly jazzed up about something, and she's telling me a story about how she was talking to her boss. And he's, you know, he's a boss, but he's also a good friend, so they kind of have a little rapport there that way. And she says to me, she's like, oh, I just feel so bad. I was talking to Scott, and I was getting so worked up about everything, and I used the fuck word. <laughs> and we had this like awkward moment, and we, could, we just kind of laugh about it, but like, Looking back on it, I, I think my mom always tried to set a good example for me. So, you know, she taught me to be humble and she taught me to be nice to other people and I never saw her drink, so I didn't drink till I was 21. <laughs> and, you know, she, she set a good example. She influenced me to be the person that I am today. Um, and I never heard her curse, uh, certainly not the fuck word. Um, <laughs> So my fifth and final short story of the evening, um, it's Easter morning, and I got these two dickhead dogs that when we travel, they don't really sleep in. So they wake me up at 5.30, I reluctantly go downstairs, I let them outside, they do their business, I can't go back to sleep naturally at this point, so I'm like, I'm gonna peel some beets. Uh, so I'm doing that, you know, and we were eating them later that day, it's for Easter. Um, so I'm peeling the beets, and you know, like 30 or 45 minutes later, when normal adults get up, my mom comes down in mom fashion in her, you know, mom pajamas, 
And we had this conversation, and I honestly don't know what it was about. Um, it wasn't anything philosophical or intelligent or otherworldly or anything like that. But it made me realize that my mom has kind of like, my mom's my mom, but she's also like my best friend, kind of, or one of my best friends. My wife's my other best friend. Um, I have many best friends. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so basically, I, you know, don't tell mom. You're like, what the hell is this guy here talking about? Well, my, my mom made me. She protected me. Um, she encouraged me. She influenced me, and she became one of my best friends. So I don't think I tell mom enough how much I love her. So, thank you. I love you too, Dad. Oh, you do. Nice job, man.